Game spiced with some remarkable goals and our commentator Martin Tyler. Sheffield Wednesday with a stadium and support worthy of the first division are back where so many football lovers feel they belong. And they're back with three new players, Brian Marwood from Hull City and Lee Chapman from Sunderland are the acquisitions in attack with the departures of Gary Bannister and Tony Cunningham. And Andy Blair was signed from Aston Villa as the midfield replacement for Gary Megson. Megson has moved on to Nottingham Forest, but there's no place for him in Brian Clough's first selection of the season. But in come Johnny Method, the Dutch international, who spent the last two years with Real Madrid, and Trevor Christie, who contributed 25 goals for Notts County last season. And still the Forest captain is Ian Bowyer, who in 1970 scored the two goals here for Manchester City, which condemned Sheffield Wednesday to relegation from the First Division. Today's referee, Neil Midgley, has passed the summer refereeing in Malaysia and Indonesia. And it's Nottingham Forest, the top scorers in the First Division last season, who get the game underway, defending the goal to the left the first half Sheffield Wednesday of course in the shirts of blue and white stripes the pitch has been completely relayed in fact the grass here was only sown eight weeks ago as Mel Sterland with the long throw finds the head only of Paul Hart and the last touch was off Brian Marwood an early season smile from the experienced Nottingham Forest central defender Paul Hart. Met Hart. Hoping to show his worth in English football to get back in the Dutch national side, Johnny Met Hart. Didn't have the happiest of times in his two years with Real Madrid. Hart, and first to the loose ball was Mel Sterland. Very much the favourite here, and you can see why. They gave him the nickname of Zico last season for his enterprising play. You can hear it being chanted now. And he moved on into the England under-21 setup as well, Mel Sterland. Always prepared to try a crack at goal, it was just too high. having to defend in earnest then. Chapman again poised to come off the near post. Lyons has gone in behind him and it's brought a corner, which is part of the intent. Blair will take it. Shelton is right in on the goal line. And it's solidly met by Paul Hart. Blair, who'd taken the corner. Shelton. Blair again. Made in a, something of a hurry by Shelton, but it almost made something for Chapman. Now was Marwood brought down by Steve Sutton? He was. Eighteen minutes gone, Forrest protest. It was just a little stab ball up in the air by Gary Shelton, but Chapman made something of it. Marwood was in pursuit and was a judge there to have been brought down by the goalkeeper. Mel Sterland had six successful penalties last season for Sheffield Wednesday and one for the England under-21s and for a spot of gamesmanship there's a booking for Steve Hodge who was slow to go outside the area as Hodge is booked Sterland has taken the ball away Remember, it's his first First Division game, Mel Sterland. It's lasted some 19 minutes, and he takes the penalty, and he scores in splendid.
Madrid style. A marvellous start for Sheffield Wednesday. The goalkeeper palpably deceived, but the drama is not yet over because Neil Midgley has ruled presumably that there was encroachment and Sterling must now go through the ordeal a second time. Neil Midgley, the referee, very much the centre of this episode, having awarded the penalty, then booked Hodge, and now retaken for Sterling. Same technique, same result, and this time it certainly does count. And delight is now mingled with relief. Sutton hadn't learnt the lesson. Sterling's nerve held. So, Sheffield Wednesday 1, Nottingham Forest 0. Hodge, also away on the left. Faced by Sterland, and now by Verardi. The linesman was flagging, in any case, for offside, and Christie pursuing shirtlift and it was a forwards tackle really rather than any great malice looked considerably worse than it was and shirtlift quickly up to take the free kick himself fair clough it drops for shelton a complete miscue but the ball will stay in play Lovely control from Christie, matched by the turn. And the pass for Davenport. Hodges committed himself as a real chance for Davenport. It's his goal, but it was superbly set up by Trevor Christie. And significantly, Christie gets his share of the congratulations. And then from Davenport, the scorer as well. It was all from... A long ball forward by Ian Bowyer. Now watch Christie here. Killed it instantly, turned brilliantly, and then waited the moment for the right pass so that Davenport was onside. Martin Hodge will be disappointed in the way he overcommitted, and Davenport kept his head to equalise. So it's 1-1. The goal coming after 36 minutes. Verardi. And Chapman, a free header! The type that strikers really know that they should score from. All credit to Steve Sutton for making the save. But from that distance, and unmarked, Chapman will feel surely that he should have scored. Corner. As Hart and Chapman continue the aerial battle. Blair's corner. And again, Forrest posting Hart to meet the first ball in. Rather than try and read any flick on. And this time it was hit more crisply to the discomfort of Sutton. And Worthington. Still Forrest stand firm. And it's finally off the line by Steve Hodge. Back from Sterling, and this time Sutton able to hang on in a beleaguered goal mouth. Where he was grateful for the help of his teammates from a fiercely driven corner initially by Blair that he had problems with. And then Chapman was right in there, Worthington too, it looped up in the air for Chapman and Lyons to go for, Steve Hodge was guarding the post. But at half-time, it's Sheffield Wednesday 1, Nottingham Forest 1. Mel Sterland a 
had put Wednesday into the lead with a twice taken penalty but then Peter Davenport set free by a marvellous piece of work from Trevor Christie equalised Sterling's nerve earlier from the penalty spot by an odd quirk of fate the last first division match that Sheffield Wednesday actually won was against Nottingham Forest back in March 1970 for their supporters it's been 14 long years in the wilderness as they choose to call it five seasons in the third division and a time when Wednesday were very close in 1976 to dropping to the fourth Sterling here's Marwood and it was Worthington coming in late and again it was noticeable how many players Sheffield Wednesday had got forward on the cross Hodge forced back by the harassing of Andy Blair the flick on from Christie and sign of a link up again with Davenport Hart there's no way back for Method Chapman was preventing it he's a tall player but with good technique and he proved it then Here's Wigley. Swain has gone outside him. Wigley using Davenport in a more central route. And Hodge, as it came off the goalkeeper, from the original shot by Davenport. And again, it was a tale of the two Hodges. Martin Hodge pushed it out from Davenport. And Stephen Hodge turned it wide of an open goal, admittedly off balance. Gary Mills just checking with Brian Clough as to whether he is to be called into the action and the top is off Colin Walsh is the player who's still feeling that injury and Walsh who's certainly got a mus muscle twinge from that turn a couple of minutes ago replaced by Gary Mills Hart's free kick. And Wellington, I think, was trying to get the ball away for the throw, but the volley was mishit. Paul Hart has been defending at the near post for much of this game when Wednesday have had corners. He's now trying to make his presence felt on the near post for Forrest. Beaten to it by Shirtlift. It's a long way for Ferrari to go. He's not the type of player to be short on confidence in this sort of situation. Still Ferrari. Brilliantly done. He certainly didn't lack the confidence. Forrest had the corner. And Peter Shirtlift headed it away to Imre Ferrari with some 70 yards to go and Forrest of course with defenders like Paul Hart forward at the original set piece those who were left backed off Ferrari went on and buried it in the corner and those watching it on the cop have seen an outstanding goal on the opening day of the season from Imre Ferrari 13 minutes into the second half it's Sheffield Wednesday 2, Nottingham Forest 1. And here's Chapman. Well, it's the sort of goal that Imre Varadi would have spent the close season dreaming about scoring, but he could hardly have imagined to start a first division campaign here with something quite so spectacular but it's no more than Sheffield Wednesday deserve
Blair's free kick. Chapman! Good reflexes from Sutton. It's a save, really, you'd expect him to make. Well within his reach. But Chapman was closing in. Flipped over the top by Sutton. Blair's corner. Fairclough, one number four, turning it away from Smith, the other. Well, so many of them have been through the trials and tribulations of 14 years, where a famous club had sunk lower than anyone thought they could ever sink. But they're back now determined to be back in some style. Swain. Twenty minutes left, and interesting from the point of view of both teams, Wednesday with their reputation of being one of the fittest clubs around, and Forest, of course, with the worry of those who did play in the pre-season game on Wednesday against Panathinaikos and had a long air journey on Friday. Whether that will be a factor remains to be seen, but Forest need a strong finish here to try and provide it. Paul Hart's gone forward again. Method. Couldn't bypass Andy Blair. Blair again. This time it's Marwood who's furthest forward for Wednesday. Ferrari lurking with intent. And he certainly needed no encouragement to try his luck again. There was menace for Forrest the moment the ball reached Imre Verardi and it needed the save. And off the line. And Shelton. For the second time in the match. Forrest fortunate that the defender had stayed on the line at a corner as both Ferrari and Mark Smith came in and it was Ferrari's header Ian Boyer who came to Forest Rescue from Imre Ferrari's header and he looks across to see Wednesday make a substitution they've taken off Mike Lyons and John Pearson is on as substitute. Ferrari. Sterling not giving it up, though. And Blair. Well, the ball, as it rolled loose, favoured Forrest and Swain. But they didn't really clear the danger when they might have done. Shelton. Gary Shelton has a first division hat-trick to his name in his days with Aston Villa. And he's a midfield player who certainly gets into scoring positions as he's done in this game. Chapman and Marwood is allowed to go on, onside. And Pearson! He could hardly believe it. It virtually hit him and went in. Hart and Sutton let the ball go. And Marwood provided the cross, which bamboozled the goalkeeper and Paul Hart. There was just a suspicion in my mind here that Marwood might have been offside. But this was the problem for Forrest on the near post. They let it run, and it hit 